Hello, this is Gary, and I just wanted to show how I exported out the subtitles I created from DaVinci Resolve for this short film that I worked on. So let's go get started. There are tutorials on how to create subtitles in Resolve. I'm not going to go into that right now, but after creating them on this little subtitle track, you then go to the delivery page, and once you've selected your render region, as I've done, you can go ahead, you would simply export out your video and your audio, or uh, I imagine that you can just export out the subtitles by themselves without exporting the video and the audio. I've not tried that, but in my case, I, was, I wanted to export the video and the audio. So um, we're going to ignore all the render settings here. These are, these are not the render settings I used. I would use DNxHR 44410 bit to get like a master file. And then the audio would be something like this, linear PCM 32 bit, 48 kilohertz. So we go to subtitle settings, and this is where it really matters. You go to export subtitle as a separate file, and we're going to export it out as an SRT file. And then we'll make sure we select the subtitle track we want to export. We'll add to render queue, and then you will just go to render all. So because my timeline actually began at one hour, which is a default in Resolve, I had to go through uh, all of these entries, about uh, 113 or so of them, and I had to eliminate that one and turn it to a zero on all of these. So one possible way to avoid removing this number one entry for the one hour point from the start and the beginning of each entry of the, of the subtitles is you can, when you create a new timeline, you can select uh, this one hour, which is the default, and you can change that to zero. And then uh, when you export out your subtitles, they would have the zeros. So once you have your subtitles file all cleaned up with the one hour removed, now you don't have to export it again. You can simply edit this text file however you please, and then you can adjust the subtitles like this. So now let me go and show you how to multiplex the video, audio, and subtitles together in a single file. So now we're going to load up a free software here called MKB Toolnix. This allows you to multiplex various audio, video, and subtitle streams together into a Matroska container. So Matroska is one of the best container formats for video. So what we're going to do, and again, this is a free program, we're going to grab one of our source files here. Now this is the 4K master of this short film. Now it's only six gigabytes, but keep in mind it was rendered from a DNxHR 4410-bit source, which was 81 gigabytes, and I transcoded this in Handbrake using H.265 10-bit with a constant quality of two. So the noise, everything has been preserved. It's just now more efficiently rendered to a six gigabyte file. So let's go ahead and drag this into MKV Toolnix. Now we're going to disable the PCM and the subtitles track. And now let's go to our audio source. So this is a 32 bit wave audio stream. It is 48 kilohertz. We're going to drag this in here. And we're just gonna choose the default option at the top, add as new source files to the current multiplex settings. Click OK. Now on this audio, we're gonna change the language to English. And finally, we're going to go to our subtitles. This is our little subtitles track that we may edit as we please. And we're going to now drag this in here. We're going to choose OK. And on the subtitles track, we're going to change a few settings. We're going to change the language to English. The default track flag will set that to no, because if it's on automatically or yes, then on most media players, the subtitles are going to play or be enabled automatically, and you probably don't want that. Generally, subtitles should be enabled. They shouldn't just have to be disabled. So we're going to choose no so that they do not enable by default. And now for the delay in milliseconds, I found that a negative 3,500 delay will, or 3.5 second delay, negative 3.5 second delay will allow the subtitles to match the original subtitle placement in the video. Now, this is kind of strange. I don't understand fully why this is. Now, on a forum, I read that if you render at 24.00 frames per second, then there won't be an issue with the subtitles being out of sync. But if you render at, like, say, 23.976 frames per second, which is what I did for this film, then to just to sort of conform to the ready-to-deliver American standard, then, unfortunately, uh, there is a bit of a delay. So just choose negative 3500 and of course if you rendered at some other frame rate and the subtitles don't synchronize just go ahead and uh, figure out what delay there is but for me I found that negative 3500 milliseconds works perfect and then you would simply choose a destination file and I'm just going to in a little temp folder here that I made so it's going to be treasure 
4ktest.mkv or Matroska. And we're just going to click on Start Multiplexing. Now this is going to be a very fast process because all it has to do is write the 6 gigabyte file with the audio and the subtitles. So it's not rendering anything, it's simply like zipping everything together into one container, one file. Now the beauty of this setup is once I have my multiplexer settings set up, I can go to save those settings. So we're just going to give this a temp file name. It doesn't really matter. So now I can close out of MKV Toolnix. And let's say I noticed when I'm playing the film that I notice a typo in one of my subtitles. I can simply go back to the subtitle file, make the edit that I need to make, save the file, and then go back to my multiplex settings and load up my configuration and click start multiplexing. And it'll rewrite that file. And if you don't want to do all that, you could just leave this window open, edit your subtitle file as you please, save it, and then just click start multiplexing. It will read the, the new file on the disk, just so you know. And so you can just click on start multiplexing and then double click within a few seconds. Your video file has been created again. And then you can go ahead and load that up and you'll see your fixed subtitles, your updated subtitles right there. So it's a very efficient way to be able to tweak your subtitles if you find any errors in them or typos or whatever. You can tweak them and then simply remultiplex the file together. So that's MKV Toolnix, and it's very useful. So I hope this helped, and thanks for watching.